Let's head back to Accident and Emergency. Go on. For another curious case. Go on. Well, in Accident and Emergency, seven-year-old Jago is in with his mum. Go on. I've cut my head. Right. How'd that happen? I have feet on my chair and I, f and I fell back. Go on. He's, I, I, I leaned back because I, it, it took a long time to fall. I tried, I tried to lean forward, but it was heavy on me, so, so it tilted backwards. OK, well, let's find out more. Jago and his pal Zana were waiting patiently to play a game of squash, but they soon got bored and started climbing on their seats. Ooh, I bet they were pretending to be mountain goats, Chris. Hmm, dangerous. Or clowning around in the circus. Even more dangerous. Or maybe they were on a spacewalk. A uh, no sound. Jago's seat tipped backwards and he bashed his head on the wall. Ouch! Yeah, I started screaming. <gasps> Quite dramatic. Examining Jago's bash bonds is Dr. Helen Stewart. First, Dr. Stewart does some tests to make sure that Jago's brain is functioning correctly. Good reflexes, Jago. Brain's good. But what about that noggin? Oh, sorry, that's your hair. I'm just. That's my hair. After some of Jago's hair is removed, the doc can finally see the wound. That's actually quite good. He's got a cut that's about a centimetre and a half in length, but the edges are quite straight and come together quite nicely. So it's it's quite deep, so I thought it might need a stitch, but actually we'll probably be able to glue the wound shut. There's a red bloody bit there. Nice hair, Jago. It's like werewolf hair. Werewolf hair? Stop it. Fixing Jago's head is sister Anna Cowlishaw. And quick clean. And we'll stick it back together with glue. Quick snap for the family album. Look away if you're squeamish. The edges of Jago's wound are held together and a few spots of special skin glue are applied. Are they closed? Are you done? Let's have a look. Great job, Sister Anna. Jago can go home now and his head will be better in about five days. And what has Jago learned? Uh, not climbing on the back of a chair. That sounds like a really good lesson, yeah. You said it, Mum. Bye. Bye. In accident and emergency, the team is ready to fix their next patient. Well, let's meet them. In Liverpool accident and emergency, five-year-old Jake has come in with his mum and a nasty cut on his head. But he's no ordinary Jake. He is... Super Jake. So, how did our superhero end up in hospital? I was running and I didn't look where I was going. Were you racing to save planet Earth, Super Jake? Bingo, bingo, bingo. That's superhero code for yes. Let's see how it happened. Super Jake was outside playing with his friends. Other superheroes? No, no, Jake was the only superhero on the scene. That's cool. Anyway, he was on a mission. To save planet Earth? Uh, something like that. Awesome. So, on his mission, he was running faster and faster, and just as he was about to take flight... What happened, Zand? What happened? He ran straight into an electricity box. Head first. Ouch! And from the nasty gash on his head, I dread to think what state that electricity box is in. Electric box, uh, just dust on it. Uh, Yikes! What happened then? Uh, um... And then I fell over. Sounds painful. Luckily, Dr Rob Maguire is ready to give Jake a thorough examination. What's, what's your name, Jake or Superman? Uh, it's Super Jake, Doc. I like your outfit. I got one of those but a bit bigger. Awesome. I need to get one. Me too. Let me have a look. Does it hurt, then? Head injuries can be dangerous, so the doctor that. needs to make sure Jake hasn't done any serious damage. The doctor knows what healthy ears and eyes look like, and Jake's look... Very, very good. Great! Next, it's the follow-the-finger test, which shows Jake's brain is responding to what his eyes are seeing. And there's no damage done. Don't worry, Mum. We can fix up that graze. He's just got a minor cut here. I think that needs to be sealed up. Ready to do that is Nurse Karen. She pulls the wound together and seals it with some sticky strips. Summoning his superhero powers, our Man of Steel doesn't feel a thing. Well, maybe just a little bit. 
He's human. He's not. He's a superhero. Oh, yeah. So you need to keep this dry. So no swimming, deep sea diving. No fighting with sharks. No. Well, that's not going to be easy for a superhero. No siree. To make sure that wound really heals, the nurse puts a dollop of special medical glue oh, on top. There we go. And with that, Super Jake is in one piece again. That deserves a high five. Yeah. And it's time for our superhero to get back to work. Bye. Just look where you're going this time. <laughs> the team from Accident and Emergency is ready for our first patient. Let's meet him. At Sheffield Children's Hospital, four-year-old Max has come in with a peculiarly puffy face. I fell down and hurt my cheek. Yeah, you did. So where were you? In the living room on the, on the wooden floor, on the, near the wooden table. You wouldn't believe it, would you, Zand? Hmm. So, how on earth did this happen? Well, a couple of days ago, Max was at home watching his favourite monster film on TV. Oh, I love a good monster film. Me too. Anyway, Max was really getting into the film, running about like the monsters. When all of a sudden he tripped, he flew through the air and landed with a bump on the wooden floor, cutting his cheek on the wooden table. Ow! Yes, and it didn't stop there. Over the next couple of days, Max's face swelled up, causing his left eye to start closing. Ouch! <laughs> So, his mum and Nan have brought him straight to hospital. His face is very swollen and red. Enter Dr Oladeo Oladipo. He'll check out our monster-loving friend. Hello, Max. How are you? I'm on the bad. Good. I'm going to examine you now. Is that all right? Mm. OK. The doctor needs to give Max a thorough examination and make sure he hasn't broken any of his facial bones. And there's a bit of... Swelling around that area, it looks like it's infected mm -hmm. and is going around the, the face, OK? Me. Max has an infection of his skin called cellulitis. It happens when your skin is broken by a cut or insect bite and bacteria get in. Sometimes the infection stays near the surface, but sometimes the bacteria infect the deeper layer, like with Max, causing the whole area to go red and swell up. And this is cellulitis. Because Max has cellulitis around his eye, it could cause bigger problems if it continues to spread. With the spread of the infection, the chance that his brain function will be affected, his sight will be affected, his breathing could also be affected. So we need to control that infection quite quickly. To do this, Max is being given antibiotics straight into the veins through the back of his hand. And this way, the medicine works much faster than swallowing tablets. He'll have to stay in hospital until the medicine starts to work, but he doesn't look too unhappy about it. We'll be back later to see how he's getting on. Our next patient was just having a normal day. But now they're in accident and emergency. Let's meet them. This is five-year-old Tyke, who's modelling a very fetching bandage around his head. I banged my head on the railings. I want you to follow me right now. And they really hurt it. I bet it did. So how did he end up banging his bonce on the railings in the first place? It was lunchtime at school, and Tiger was running fast. Faster than Olympic gold medalist Usain Bolt. No way! <gasps> well, OK, not that fast, but go with it. He ran so fast, he passed three countries in three seconds. He ran across the world and into orbit. No way! No, I'm exaggerating. Nothing could stop him. But then he slipped and went flying into some spiky railings. Ouch! There was blood all over here. Ooh, sounds nasty. Enter Dr. Vanessa Merrick. She'll sort Tiger out. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to give it a clean. It looks a bit deep, so it may be that we need to put a couple of stitches in. You can see that he's got quite a big cut to the right side of his head. Warning, this looks a bit gross. It goes all the way through from the surface of the skin, right through the, the fat that's underneath and 
the muscle as well and right through to the bone. So that's why we need to put the stitches in to hold it together. In that case, let's get that head numb. We don't want Tig feeling those stitches. First, Nurse Laura numbs the surface skin with gel. Then Dr. Vanessa injects a stronger anaesthetic deeper into the tissue. This means Tig shouldn't feel a thing. It's going to have a test. Can you feel that? What? I'll take that as a no. Well, that's good then. <laughs> now his head's numb, let's get stitching. Stitches are only used when a wound is really deep. They join the sides of the cut together to help it heal. In this emergency department, they use 100 metres of stitching thread in a year. That would go round Tig's head 200 times. We're just going to put this over your eyes, sweetheart. Is that OK? Just... Anyway, to finish things up, Nurse Laura applies some special glue. This seals the whole wound to help it heal and stop infection. It's going together pretty well, hasn't it? Now he's stitched up, it's time for Tig to head home. Back in the emergency department, Chris is waiting for an operation on his hands. Are you? <laughs> well, they look all right to me, but it's not my decision. Let's get you to theatre. Not me, Zand. Mini Chris. We met him earlier with a gory gash to his hand. He'd been playing Britain's Got Talent with his sister and her mate when his jumping act went totally wrong. Not a good idea. He slipped on some moss and cut his hand on the gate. Chris's cut was too deep to fix in A&E, so he's back bright and early to have surgery. It's definitely looking a bit yucky. It's gone all purple. Chris needs a general anaesthetic, so he'll be asleep for the operation. Sweet dreams. Ready to get handy with Chris's hand is Dr Susie Yao. Let's give her a big hand. Enough with the hand jokes. So, we'll just give it a quick clean. Her first job in surgery is to check for any serious injuries. Inside your hand, there are lots of nerves, tendons and blood vessels. These things are vital to your hand, and so they are wrapped in a protective tissue called the palmar fascia. If Chris's cut goes deeper than this protective layer, it could lead to complications. Over to you, Dr Susie. There is always a risk that these important structures can be damaged and if they're damaged, then in the long run, that can cause poor healing and poor function. Time for a thorough examination. Gross alert. Amazingly, he has not breached his fascia. Very lucky. Great news. Now it's time to prep the cut ready for stitches. What I did was I took away a little bit of tissue on either side of the cut. It's important to create a brand new, fresh edge for the skin to heal nicely. And they've stitched him up in no time. Lovely job. Over in the recovery room, our patient is still feeling a bit sleepy after his operation. Whoa, a bit wobbly there, Chris. But don't worry, the anaesthetic will wear off very soon. Bye. Anything you've learned from this? Don't um, climb over fences. And will you be entering any more playtime talent contests? Mm. This is one act Simon Cowell won't be seeing anytime soon. Bye, Bye Mini Chris! Chris.